few weeks ago I released a video talking about SDI or serial digital interface and what what that is the different types of flavors that are out there and the questions that I got asked most frequently as a result of that video both on YouTube itself and through my website and an email uh, was about SDI cables like what types of cables you should use for SDI so I'm going to try and clear up some of that uh, confusion that's out there today and, and hopefully steer you in the right direction so Hey everyone, my name is Doug. I run a company in Orem, Utah called Doug Johnson Productions. We do live event videography, so things like uh, business conferences, concerts, sporting events, those types, types of things. And as part of running that company, I've been producing these videos on YouTube talking about the things that I've learned, uh, things that people would know to get into the business. So SDI, um, as I mentioned in the previous video, is a way of sending video digitally uh, primarily over over copper cables. It can also be over fiber or wireless, but but primarily over copper cables, and that's what we're going to cover today. So there are two different standards that are officially used uh, for sending SDI. Um, so the types of cables, um, I've got one of each here. So this is basically an RG59, and then over here is an RG6. So those are two different flavors, and th those standards refer to uh, not just the physical characteristics of the cable, such as its uh, diameter and the size of the conductor inside and whatnot, uh, but it also talks about the uh, electrical characteristics, so such as something it's called impedance. Uh, something when you're talking about sending um, any sort of audio, video signal, or whatever uh, down a, a coax cable or down any cable, uh, you have to worry about impedance. And these cables are. Uh, 75 ohm, so I have a 75 ohm impedance, and that's really important. If you if you try and use a cable that has another impedance, uh, the signal may not propagate at all, or it may have very limited range. So you have, you have to really really watch that. So there's another similar type of cable out there. So this one's RG59. Now I have over here a different type of cable, and this is RG58. Now, physically, they look very similar. I think they're nearly identical in size. And these both actually use BNC connectors on the ends. But these RG58 cables are 50 ohm, not 75 ohm. So they might work for you in a pinch, and if you're running cables over very short distances, but they're really not recommended. Uh, the, your mileage will definitely vary based on the quality of the cable, the distance you're running it, and the quality of the equipment that you're connecting to. So. If you happen to run across some, some RG58 cable like this, try and steer clear. Um, one, one way you can tell them apart, I, I, I didn't know this until a few, few years ago. If you look at the ends of the cable, uh, the 58 actually has this white plastic uh, piece in there and the RG59 does not. So that, that white plastic in there basically indicates that this is a 50 ohm cable instead of a 75 ohm cable. And if that, that's missing, then you know you've got a 75 ohm cable. So just at a glance, you can look at the end of the cable and tell the difference there. So, but the bottom line is, if you can counter RG58, don't use it. It's for radio frequency applications like antennas, and it's not meant for video, so get rid of it. All right, now the other standard we got here, this is RG6. Uh, and if you've done any wiring in your home for uh, cable, TV, or satellite, you're probably familiar with the term RG6. And this is, in fact, a very similar type of cable. This is a higher grade of, of that type of cable, but it really is essentially just the same thing. Similarly, this RG59 is very similar to what we used to have in our homes for cable TV in the 80s and into the 90s. Uh, they're both 75 ohm cables. They both carry a signal. The main difference is that the RG6 is a higher grade so you're going to get longer runs, uh, the signal's going to travel further distances, and you'll have less likely, uh, the signal breakdown is going to be a lot less likely. Also, if you're talking about higher frequency signals, so things like 12 gig SDI or 6 gig SDI, or, um, they're gonna, those are going to travel better over an RG6 cable than they will an equivalent quality RG59 cable. So something to watch out for there. Now, these are two types of cables that I've actually standardized on. So I'm um, not necessarily saying you should buy these brands, but this is a Belden 1505A. This is a Belden 1694A. 
Uh, they have other variations, the 1505F and the 1694F that are more flexible. These are a little bit rigid, and when you lay them out on the ground, they kind of want to do their own thing. Um, so they're not the super easiest thing to work with. These are primarily actually designed for, say, in-wall or in-ceiling, you know, in permanent installation inside of a facility. And for example, my trailer, I've used 1505 throughout. Um, 1505 and 1694 are technically not necessarily rated for 12 gig SDI, but they do work for shorter runs. And they work fairly well for 6 gig SDI as well. Um, in terms of connectors on the ends, connectors are just as important as, as the cables themselves. Uh, the connector can be a huge source of loss if you get a cheap one. I have standardized on Canair connectors for all of my cables. I, at this point, I don't use connectors from anybody else. And speaking of, I do make my own cables and I'll show you the tools to do that uh, in a minute. So, so uh, Canair also does make very high quality cable as well. They've got equivalents for both this 1505A or RG59 and for the RG6 or the 1694A uh, Belden brand. Um, both brands are also available in different colors. In this case, obviously, I've got, got a blue one. Decided to get a little bit whimsical when I bought that one. And then kind of your standard black. But they're available in a range of colors as well. Um, in terms of range, uh, 6 gig SDI, I have easily gotten 100 feet on 1505A. Um, trying to push much past that though, you're a little bit, you're kind of pushing your luck. 6 gig over 1694, um, 200 feet generally fairly safe. If you step up to 12 gig SDI though, things can break down pretty pretty quickly. Um, you might be able to get 100 feet depending on uh, on the 59, RG59, if you have high quality equipment on both ends, but I really wouldn't necessarily go with um, this type of cable if you're trying to do 12 gig, gig SDI. There are cables, other cables, that are specifically designed for handling those higher frequency signals. But, and they still fall within the same standards of RG59 and RG6. So you just have to kind of shop around. Uh, manufacturers of cables always have spec sheets on there. That the main, main thing you're looking for is the, the loss at those higher frequencies. Um, for example, uh, this 1505A at 100 feet, it loses, I believe it's 13 decibels when you get up to uh, 12 gigahertz frequency, so 12 gig SDI. And depending on your equipment, that might be too much. So you just kind of have to look at the specs on, you, on, the, on the cable to see if it's going to be able to carry the signal that, that you need to carry and do so without failing. Also pay close attention to your connectors as well. Um, this is one place you definitely don't want to skimp. So um, if, you're, if you need to get something locally in a pinch, you can actually use RG6 that you get at your local home improvement store. And I've got, I've got just a little, little piece of that here. So this is RG6, similar to this. This is the stuff that they actually run in your house for satellite TV and cable TV. Um, it does care, it is 75 ohm, and it does carry SDI video signals reasonably well if you have a high enough quality cable. Uh, the thing to look, if, look for in your home improvement store is make sure you get the quad shield. So it's RG6 quad shield. Uh, that just gives extra an extra guarantee that the signal is not going to escape and it's not going not going to allow outside signals in uh, as much as the cheaper grade cable that's out there. Um, the, in addition to being able to be found locally, this is actually pretty cheap. You can get a, a 500 foot spool of this stuff for 60, 70 bucks, uh, whereas this stuff con is considerably more expensive. Now, if you're going to buy this stuff from from the home improvement store, you also want to make sure that the connectors you buy are the compression type. So, I don't, I don't have my tool set up for this, but basically uh, you strip the end of the cable, put the connector on there, and then you insert it in the tool and it squeezes it, which then applies uh, pressure to the inside of the cable and holds it in place. The compression fittings are a lot more reliable than the twist or uh, crimp connectors that you would get in the store. But if you're talking about actual real professional connectors on, on professional cable, these are actually crimp connectors. Uh, you, can kind of, you can kind of see where my crimp tool has, uh, has created a hex shape on there. So 
crimp it, crimping is definitely the strongest way to hold onto a, a connector or to hold onto a cable. Uh, unfortunately, the, the crimp connectors that you get at your home improvement stores are basically garbage. I wouldn't I wouldn't consider using those. So crimping is gen with a high quality connector is the best way to go. Now, um, so we'll talk about connectors here. So uh, as, as I mentioned, I do make all my own cables. Um, that allows me to get the exact right length that I need. Um, so these connectors here are from Canair. They are, so these are the Belden uh, BCP B4F connectors. Um, you can see that there's actually no pin in there yet. Inserting the pin is part of the, part of the process when you actually go to crimp the cable. But yeah, so you insert the, you put the pin on the end of the cable, uh, push that over the end of the connector, and then you crimp it. So I'll kind of show you briefly what that process looks like. Um, this is the stripper for the wire, and I do highly recommend getting the branded uh, strippers. They work a lot better than the cheap ones. They are a little spendy. This was, I think, 85 bucks for this guy. So... Um, you know, it is a little bit of an investment, but uh, so essentially what the process is, you take your piece of cable, insert it into the crimp tool, uh, all the way, uh, yeah, you won't be able to see in there, but uh, insert it all the way and then close it, and then put your hand around here, and then spin this a number of times, and it makes all of the cuts that you need to make. So, uh, at that point, open up, open up the tool, it's got this little lever, lever that you squeeze, and then as you pull the cable out, you'll see that it automatically uh, cuts ins or cuts the insula insulation and outer braid at the appropriate length. So if, at that point, I'm not actually going to finalize this. I don't want to waste a connector, but uh, you take one of the pins. Pin goes on the end. Oh, I did. I did skip one step here. So I'm just pretend I'm there. I did this prior to uh, skipping the cable. So you put your your ferrule on there. That goes over the end there. Okay, so there we go. So you put your ferrule on. Then you strip it. And then you put your pin on. Crimp the pin. So I've got the crimp tool for that. Uh, uses the in this case uses the second hole that's in there. So you crimp that, and then after you've crimped that, then you push your connector on there, slide the ferrule up, ar ferrule up around it, and then crimp the ferrule, and that holds the connector in place. Very, very solid connection. Uh, in the, gosh, 15, 16, maybe even 20 years I've been using these things, I've never had a single one fail. They've worked absolutely flawlessly. Uh, and that's the reason, main reason I trust them. Uh, these these connect connectors are absolutely awesome. So, um, but the process is basically the same when you're talking about the uh, RG59 or the RG6. Um, you do have to make sure that you get the right tools in order to do your stripping and your crimping uh, based on what cable you, ha you get. So even though this is RG59, its dimensions can vary just ever so slightly from, from other manufacturers, other models. And so when you go to, to buy your connectors, and your crimp tools and crimp die, uh, you gotta make sure that you, you buy some that are compatible uh, with the with the connectors and cable that you're using. Um, so pretty important to make sure you got that. Otherwise, you won't get a, a secure connection on those. So um, but that's kind of the, that's kind of the basics. Um, creating your own cables is much cheaper than buying them off the shelf, um, just in terms of cost. Um, when you buy these connectors in a box of 100, uh, I get mine from fullcompass.com, but they're all available all over the place. The price ranges from a little less than $2 a piece to up to $4 a piece, like I say, depending on quantity and where you get them. Uh, that's considerably cheaper than buying a pre-made cable from somewhere else. The actual cable itself, and this, this, this is a Belden 1505A, just like this one. Um, 500 foot spool of this stuff. About three hundred dollars ish, somewhere in that ballpark. So, about sixty cents a foot. Um, I haven't bought any sixteen ninety four in a while. It is more expensive. Um, and then, if you step up to the twelve gig SDI certified stuff, 
it is a little bit more expensive yeah, even from there. So um, I did put together a list here of some of the different types of cable that that I would I would recommend. So if you need three gig SDI, uh, the RG59 options from Belden, 1505A for the stuff that's typically installed permanently, or 1505F for the more flexible cable. Uh, if it's something you're gonna be spooling and using uh, on location or whatever. So it's 1505A or 1505F. The Canair versions um, are L-4CFB and L-4CHD. Those are, again, those are three gig versions. And then if you get into the RG6 for three gig, uh, the, those are 1694A or 1694F, again, depending on whether you need the more flexible stuff. And then in Canair, uh, those were building. And for Canair, it's L-4.5CHD. If you want to step up to, to, to 12 gig cable, uh, the Belden RG59 is called 4505R, and the Canair is L-3.3CUHD. And then in RG6 for 12 gig, you've got 4694R from Belden and L-5.5CUHD from Canair. In terms of connectors for the RG59, F cable, the more flexible cable for Belden. Um, the Canair connector is the BCP B40, uh, BCP dash B45HW um, for 1694. So the RG6 variant is BCP dash A42. And then for the A versions, so the more rigid, uh, for 1505A, that's the BCP B53, for, for the BCP B53 for the for the uh, 1694 and the BCP B4F for the 1505A. So, but uh, that's kind of the gist of it. So, um, bottom line is make sure your cable that you're getting is either RG59 or RG6 or variant thereof. Every manufacturer has their own model numbers and they have different levels of quality based on what you need, what type of signal you need to carry and how far it needs to go. Uh, but those, those are the types that I actually recommend. Um, I've had great luck with both Canair and Belden. I do recommend both of those brands. In terms of connectors, I don't use anybody but Canair anymore, so. So, um, so that's about it. So yeah, SDI uh, travels over 75 ohm cable. Um, I'll talk about fiber in another video. I've kind of already covered that on the channel, but I can certainly cover that in additional detail uh, if you guys wanted, wanted that. So um, if you enjoy this type of content and want to help contribute to the channel, um, sign up as a patron on the patreon.com. So it's the patreon.com slash DJPROD link down there in the description um, all the money that we collect on patreon goes towards reviewing products uh, does not go into my pocket so uh, if you have additional questions or comments be sure and leave those down below uh, also take suggestions or smart remarks there as well and also be sure and share like and subscribe the video uh, thanks again thanks for watching have a great day